Welcome back to Oracle of Seasons. We're actually going left instead of front first. Uh, avoid these traps. Kill all the chews. Not Jews, chews. Chews really change appearances throughout the games a lot, I've noticed. Because, like, in this game, they're just kind of blobs. In Twilight Princess, they're even more of blobs without eyes, even. Then in Minish Cap and Wind Waker, like, holy crap, those guys are weird. I mean, this is a kill-all-enemies room. Kill-all-the-snake ropes is what they're called. And that's why it's called Snake Remains, because there's going to be a hell of a lot of snake carcasses once you're done. Grab a key. Luckily, the chews don't respawn, because they can be annoying and knock you into pits. Break out the ember seeds. This is a really simple puzzle. No one should ever have trouble with it. I mean, gee, you got torches and a closed door. What do you think you're going to do? Over here, we got a quick room over here. Admittedly, a lot of the puzzles in Seasons are kill all enemies, so you can either get a dropped item or push a block to open a door or get an item. Ages does remedy that with some better puzzles. And even later on in Seasons, they get some more creative ones. But as I've stated before, this is a combat-oriented one. Here's more killing all enemies. Yippee. Ah, again, I wanted to charge that, whatever. Anyway, interesting thing to note here. Got a bunch of blocks shaped like an arrow. Gee, what should you do? Now pay attention here. It sounds slightly different. When there isn't an obvious indicator like this arrow here, that will indicate that it's a bombable wall. And you can get secrets like this. Or you can collect a ton of rupees. And correct me if I'm wrong, actually don't, uh, if this is the only time you actually get green rupees in this game. Because there are, like, no other green rupees as far as I remember. Maybe other hidden rooms, but, yeah. Let's see, which I do I... Uh, I'm good. I did open a door by defeating all the enemies, but I want to go this way first, because it has a very nice prize. And... Gotta kill. These things are annoying. You can't actually kill them, you have to push them into pits. And now... This, this is a fun little combat thing, I think. It can be a little irritating, but uh, these things drop bombs, so... Just cut them down with your sword. Throw bombs over there. They explode and completely miss. Ha! Twofer. And now we got the power bracelet. Very useful item. It's it's abused to hell, I swear. Oh, I don't want to say abused because that sounds negative, but you will be using it a lot. And what it lets you do is essentially lift heavy things like pots which you couldn't lift before now you got the dungeon map I don't think I've shown the map yet so you press select and you get that you can see where the chests are you can see where the boss is blah 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 you can also tell how many rooms uh, levels there are if you're weird like that pots are a lot like grass they drop rupees and hearts and whatnot if you're low and here's more killing all enemies, so whoopee. So really, this is a test of how observant you are. Do you notice that something is off-center? Always gotta make it symmetrical. Oh, sh giant trap. Crazy things. Luckily, they follow a very set pattern, and they're fairly easy to avoid. Do we want to go down here? Aha! Uh -huh. You hold down the power bracelet button, and you can push these things. And if you're not careful, they'll come back. You can go this way if you need some more hearts. I don't, but I just want to demonstrate. Throw stuff at the keys. Stupid keys. Get, the, get away. I don't like your keys. Ah! And that's what happens if you get squished. You you lose stuff. It's like falling down a pit, only more graphic. But also more comedic in a way. 
So that's why I recommend pushing as far as you can before you head back. Here's a gash seed. Probably not going to be utilizing that too much. And over here... This is a little secret area that actually gave me a lot of trouble when I was a kid. Well, it's not a secret area, but kind of annoying to get to. Basically, it's a time thing. You have a limited amount of time to get to a chest before it disappears. And as a kid, I could not understand the concept of pre-planning. Like that. I would draw out the bomb as soon as I got to the thing, rather than drawing it out as I was approaching. And uh, it is possible to fail this and run out of bombs, and that's why there's a, a Deku scrub in the previous room that will sell you bombs for way over the legitimate price. But luckily there's a lot of bomb dropping bushes throughout the dungeon, so if you're really a cheapskate you can backtrack a bit. Nice. Hello, Mr. Deku. And now you can actually lift these boulders, but I'm not going to be doing that. Keys. There we go. It is a bit tricky to manage both pushing these and fighting the keys at the same time. Because keys can be really annoying if they're flying around being jerks. Destroy those. These bushes should drop some bombs. Yep. Mystery seeds too. Don't need too many of those. And now we're good with bombs. It's that easy. Whoopsie. Alright, I'm going to switch out of bombs just in case I don't do that again. I did kill a bat with a bomb. That is awesome though. Here's Thwomps making appearance. If you are not uh, accustomed to the 2D Game Boy Zeldas, uh, several Mario enemies do make cameos, including Goombas and Link's Awakening. And I think there's actually, uh, not, not bloopers, but uh, Cheep Cheeps in this game somewhere. I think around level 4. Down... To choose coming out of nowhere. Careful of the pits, they're annoying. And these are cracked floors. They will crumble under your weight, as I believe I have demonstrated. Which is why I recommend doing that. Like that. And this is what happens when I react too much rather than actually giving commentary. Which is one advantage I had to post commentary in Metroid, but I guess it ends up overall less interesting. And here's our mini-boss. He's Face Guy. I, like, he, I heard he likes to play Paper Mario. He's a pretty cool guy. Anyway, he was actually a main boss in Link's Awakening, but he got shafted to mini-boss here actually twice. He appears twice in the game. Anyway, same as Link's Awakening, I believe. Drop bombs on him. These enemies will drop things for you to hurt him with. Whoa. I actually haven't played through Link's Awakening, so I don't know if all these moves are directly ripped. But it doesn't matter because he's dead. Drops a fairy. And that is where I will leave you guys. I'll be finishing the dungeon next time. Until then, see ya.